Morning all. Let's have a look at another classic encounter earlier this year between Stockfish, currently the strongest uh, rate rated chess computer in the world against Komodo. Uh, this was in the very first game of their epic match, uh, the Super Final. Uh, so this is the TSEC, uh, TCEC Season 6. Stockfish kicked off with E4 and I'll turn on my own little Stockfish here. And we saw a French defence by Komodo. Uh, so far uh, their book is being used here. I've got actually the annotated PGN um, from the excellent uh, TSEC site. I'll give you that in the description of this video so you can see actually times and when they come out of the opening book. For the moment we have a French defense, Winnowa variation. So it's all book knight e7. Black gives up that dark square bishop. Uh, positionally, we can note with that dark square bishop removal, White has the bishop pair but compromised pawn structure. This pawn chain in particular is interesting to consider the central control on the dark squares. In particular, keeping note of the e5 square throughout the course of this game, I think it's quite interesting to see how White either occupies it or controls it at various points. So Black plays c5, Queen g4, this is all booked so far. Queen c7. So offering a gambit here. Uh, this for the moment is, is rejected in this position, uh, even though my engine seems to think this might be an, an okay move. I think in live book um, that is actually the top move to take immediately. Uh, Bishop d3 is the second most popular. Uh, so we see Bishop d3 does have some advantages, uh, like uh, knight e2 is possible after cd to hold c3 without uh, blocking in the bishop. So black plays c takes d4 here and we see this feature now, knight e2. You might think, well what about the e5 pawn here? Uh, this is of no uh, significance I think, this is um, quite good for white, uh, bishop f4, it's, it's opening up the dark square bishop a little bit. and. Um, it should be a little bit better for white in this position. Uh, so black doesn't really want to do that. Black hasn't got the bishop pair, wants to generally try and keep the position closed. So, okay, so knight e2, they're out of book after this move actually. This is where depth 36 was reached, I think, for this move. And you can see the depths here, as I say, in the description of the video. So knight e2, and black took on c3. White took that pawn. This is a slight problem with this whole variation that the g7 pawn is more fragile uh, after this queen g4. The bishop, which was defending g7, um, has gone. So white takes that pawn. So black's basically gambiting for quite often very fierce pressure uh, on that g5 and in the center. Uh, so queen takes h7, played here. And now black plays knight d7. If black had played queen takes e5, and this is okay for white, but I can do various things here actually. I think bishop f4 and h4 for example, and you see good dark square grip here. Uh, so this is this could be fun for white. So black played this knight d7, and I'm going to remove my annotations on the right, they're a bit disturbing, so I'm going to just get rid of the commentary. <laughs> delete all the commentary. So I can see the moves coming up myself. So knight d7, white protects that e5 pawn like this here. Okay, now going into this pin, how uncomfortable is that? That wasn't actually taken here. If knight takes here, white can just castle. The knight is protecting the bishop. There's no little trick with knight f3, or, or rather it's, it's harmless to play knight f3, just king h1. Uh, and this position, for example, is going to be very good uh, for white. Uh, black shouldn't be doing this with a king on e8. So for for the moment, um, yeah, that isn't taken. It opens up the position. Black plays knight c5, and now we see rook b1. Okay, it doesn't matter about taking light square bishop here. I think this is just helping white a bit. If taking 
queen can come back and this is very pleasant looking so black plays bishop d7 here my engine has a slight advantage to white here my stockfish now white castles king side and black castles queen side and we see bishop g3 now black's kind of released the pressure a bit with this knight here on on e5 and that, that e5 is quite quite well gripped the bishop now also has some options with this move the f pawn might potentially go to f4 but it might just go here for the bishop to come back like this or the bishop can go like this on the dark squares basically the dark squares uh, with the dark square bishop are very interesting for white generally not just the e5 but the other ones as well we see bishop c6 uh, and now d4 might be actually a concern here and this is blockaded so knight d4 keeps the bishop hemmed in keeps the pawn blocked nice positional move so a kind of um, a nice grip on the position for white on these two central squares and reducing the dynamism of black's pieces quite significantly for the moment bishop a4 is played okay so there might be some significant pressure to be built up here with knight c6 potentially to try and then threaten things like taking in c2 maybe white plays now bishop b5 which intensifies actually it's a kind of dark square attack because black with knight c6 could be attacking the dark squares here d4 and e5 but bishop b5 is prepared to give up that light square bishop uh, to, to keep that grip on these two dark squares in the center and in fact we see this now after knight c6 uh, well what else does black do black doesn't want to take here because then we'll have this important tempo gain on the queen and then horrible things in this position can happen queen f7 knight d6 so black played uh, knight c6 and this was snapped off so this forms part of a dark square campaign bishop takes c6 so you see look at the grip here it's very very good black's pieces uh, are not very full of life at the moment and in fact the only piece threatening to do something interesting like knight e4 that's extinguished now with the move f free here uh, just just to consider that earlier sorry just just to have a look at this position well the knight was prevented you know this, this attack on a4 here so there was didn't seem to be an opportunity for knight e4 to have been played ever so in this position after taking now it, it became a serious concern um, well relatively serious so f3 extinguishing the knight so all of black's pieces kind of restricted here and you might think this g file does it offer anything well nothing concrete against white's king as long as this bishop is kept hemmed in by this blockade so the rooks can't coordinate on this diagonal then it seems quite safe at the moment we see now rook h8 queen g7 and the queen via g7 can actually come back to f6 if needed uh, that's an important thing so for example rook here there'll be queen f6 and it can escape if needed like that so after this we see b6 now rook fe1 keeping a stronger grip now on e5 means other pieces are freer to come back if needed rook d f8 but there's another point now revealed to rook e1 as well that this c4 c3 pawn is extremely vulnerable actually to rook e3 so black now defends that but now we see rook b4 so all the defenders are being attacked the defender of the knight is being attacked by the knight here as well so it looks as though black's position is getting a little bit more fragile uh, white's potentially going to play something like queen g4 to put pressure here for knight takes c6 to get rid of that defender and then snap off the knight on a4 okay so black played here bishop e8 getting it out of target of the knight queen f6 and actually with queen f6 not only can the queen retreat but also it does support this battery bishop h4 on these dark squares that e7 in particular is a little bit more vulnerable with that bishop on e8 there's no rook e8 to defend e7 so that square is available to white potentially now and in fact we see this after king b7 bishop h4 
So what started to be a nice grip on E5 is spread across other dark squares in the vicinity, particularly E7, F6, now Knight B2. And that really represents a defender of the C3 pawn. So white is systematically trying to uproot the defenders of this pawn. Um, here now, why was Knight B2 necessary? Let's see. Um, well, apart from Queen E7, that doesn't seem an immediate idea, but maybe the idea is just accepting the pawn is going to drop off and trying to get the knight to c4. So knight b2, queen e7, accepting the pawn's dropping off. Knight c4, so it is actually snapped off here. White is increasing an advantage. But black has in mind uh, something special in this position which seems to promise some counterplay. Black sacrifices the exchange here to win that e5 pawn. So winning an important sense of pawn. You might think, well, in general, in human games, these two pawns could be dangerous after, if black can expand the center. Queen f2, rook g8. Okay, now f4, getting back a grip on the e5 square, actually, now. Queen d6, knight b3 now is played. So pressure is being put on black, that d4 square being vacated now potentially for the queen, which would mean then something like rook takes c4 is threatened. Uh, but also knight c5 check is eyed here because there's a pin on b6. So king b8. We see now rook d3 here, so threatening rook takes c4. Black plays knight takes a3. Now knight c5, so this looks very tactical now, attacking the knight like this. What's going on here? Knight b5, not too many moves at black's disposal. Check, king b7, and now we see the move c4 using that pin on d5, hitting the knight here. Okay, so what is going on here? If the knight retreats to c7, then c5 looks very very strong with black's king it seems getting a full blast here so knight takes and then say rook a3 it looks very very unpleasant this position indeed uh, so black actually played king takes a6 tries to keep things closed relatively closed check king b7 white is the exchange up and it still seems as though d4 and e5 are quite well gripped here. Rook b1, which would be so. Rook d2. This means that things like rook a2 become possible. Rook c8. Now in this position, actually white realises he has actually theoretically got a winning past h pawn in principle. Uh, in practice, obviously, Got to be very, very careful. It's not going to drop off and become a liability. So it's pushed here though, h4, rook c5. So maybe using the b5 pawn to get a little bit of time for the h pawn queening campaign. So h5, trying to accelerate that past pawn, dropping b5, h6. And now in this position, actually, there's a maneuver which would keep hold of f6 and make way for protecting the queening square. So queen h4 to f6, potentially on the cards here. a6, and white's advantage is significantly going up according to my engine after this move. Uh, it's difficult to suggest for black what to do here. Um, this pawn is starting to be very, very dangerous. If bishop c4, that's another thing, well h7 immediately, and it looks as though after queen d4, this is very, very dangerous now. Queen d8, black's on the back foot. And in fact, white in this position can turn attention uh, to b6 with rook db2. And black seems to be getting overloaded. For example, b5, rook takes, and it's black's king that seems to be in very big trouble. Um, but even if it isn't here, white can switch attention to that pawn. Rook b3 threatens all sorts of things like rook a3 and rook g3. So it's getting very, very dangerous. So this, this in this position, uh, move a6, it seems white is systematically increasing the advantage in any case. 
So queen h4, this is a very, very dangerous pass pawn. Fruit of the opening really, real, being realized later that taking out the g7 pawn and the h7, we get this dangerous h pawn. So rook c8, queen f6, the queen still sitting now on that central e5 square, but also facilitating this other goodie in the position, the h pawn. Check, king h2, queen c7, rook db2 now is played. D4, I mean, this, this move really ties down the bishop to b6, really. Uh, but now with d4, the rook goes to attack that pawn there. Uh, so here you might think, well, what of what of d3? If d3 here, white can actually just take this and get a very good position after this. That's that's winning, really. Uh, so black dare not play that. Queen c5 was played, dropping f7. Uh, that is taken actually here. Rook c7, queen g6. So h7 is simply threatened. Queen f8, rook takes d4, black is falling to bits now. The exchange down, and now it's also equal on pawns. Bishop e8, another pawn bites the dust. Rook c6, queen e4, letting the h6 pawn actually go actually. But white has now got these two passed pawns to work with. So after taking here king g1, queen e6, it's basically becoming easier now for white after this. The exchange of queens, the two connected passed pawns are ready to roll. f5, g4, it's over. Check, rook c7, it's basically over but there's an adjudication rule that both engines have to realize it's above a certain uh, level on the evaluation so white's now a rook up after this and here um, black was resigned the operator resigned on behalf of komodo so i thought it was quite a fascinating game 61 mover quite a big game in the winner interesting um, casting some doubt theoretically, you know, in this line if Black's uh, pawn sacks are sound. But uh, I think we all knew that sometimes these gambits can be refuted by engines. Gambits like this are very good in practical human play and often result in brilliant games with the resulting pressure. But here we see a, a clinical precision and uh, control from White. But I think especially instructive was the dark square campaign, which we saw vividly in this game, uh, with moves like bishop b5 in this key position. So keeping this grip on these dark squares at all times, especially for the blockade properties of stopping the d-pawn in this diagonal, black never really seemed to get any menacing counterplay on this g-file. So very, very carefully controlled on the center and the dark squares. And then later this this h pawn is starts to get ready to roll at some stage after black's exchange sack it becomes clear that this h pawn is um, a treasure for white to make great use of and i thought it was quite instructive using this h4 to f6 maneuver as well the pawn actually being given up at a certain stage um, just to get these other pawns going now it's still winning Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.